Making all things right Right now Reconciled by the blood of Christ Hello, everyone, and welcome to the broadcast. We're glad you could join us today, and we invite you to sign in and let us know where you're viewing from. You may know someone else who needs to hear the Word of God today, someone else who's going through a struggle or a situation. Invite them right now to tune in so that they can hear the truth of God's Word. And when you know the truth, Jesus said, the truth would make you free. Hey, we're just excited once again about letting you know that Word of Life is open for business once again. We are meeting every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And uh, we invite you to come and join us for our live service. But in the event that you can't or that you're out of town or whatever the case may be, uh, we still will be coming to you via uh, our online broadcast here, Facebook uh, Live. And uh, we, we are just so glad to be able to join you today and have you join us. And I uh, also want to remind you that our Wednesday evening services are still being live streamed and uh, you can tune in at 7 o'clock Central Time each and every Wednesday night as well as 10 a.m. each and every Sunday morning. Glad you're here. So let's get into the Word today. We're looking, uh, we began looking last week to the book of uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1. I'd like to read to you once again from our uh, main text. Beginning in verse 6, he said, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance, that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord Jesus, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our own works, but according to His own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Now, we've uh, talked to you uh, numerous times over the preceding weeks about the spirit of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear. But it's the spirit of fear that dominates all mankind. But it doesn't dominate the believer and it doesn't have to because Jesus has already taken care of that. That's why the scripture tells us in the book of Hebrews chapter 2 that we have been delivered from the fear of death. We've been delivered from the power of Satan. We've been delivered from the bondage that that fear of death held us in. The scripture teaches us that it is that fear of death that keeps all men in bondage. That's the reason that men act the way that they do. It's because of the fear of death, the fear of the unknown. It's not just the physical death that men are afraid of. It's what comes next. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus and you don't know what comes next, then that fear of death will cause you to do desperate things. It will cause you to uh, hide out. It will cause you to... To, uh, to run. It'll cause you to, to flee in terror. But when you realize that, the, that physical death is not the worst thing that can happen. No, it's the second death described in Revelation chapter 20 that, that really is the one that you want to avoid at all cost. How do we do that? By receiving Jesus, by receiving this gift of God that He has made available to us through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it's so important to know this because only when you have been delivered from the fear of death and only when you are, let's say it like this, when you're ready to die, that's when you're really ready to live. Or you could say it a different way, until you're ready to die, you're really not ready to live. But when you know what, what death is, when you know that physical death becomes then a transition into the glory of God, well, praise the Lord, that changes everything. And so... The, 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 the Apostle Paul says to us, the Holy Ghost says to us here in 2 Timothy chapter 1, that God has not given us the spirit of fear. No, by, by virtue of, of the blood of Jesus, we've been delivered from that spirit of fear. What has taken its place? The spirit of power, the spirit of, of love, the spirit of a sound mind. This is what we as believers get to partake of. Now, is this important? Well, it's everything. Because you see, the church 
is, is um, it's a different, it's a different uh, uh, entity. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. And because of that, God has, has changed us. He's, he's regenerated us. He's given us a new nature. We've been born again. And God has also given us access into things that natural man doesn't have. And we see this so well illustrated on the day of Pentecost. The power of the Holy Ghost is the power of God. Now, the church has to learn to operate in power. The church has to learn to partake of God's power and not live as natural men. It takes power to live the Christian life. It takes power to succeed and, and overcome in life. And it's the power of the Holy Ghost that He's made available to us. Now, once again, you remember the story of Peter. How that Peter, you know, one of the twelve disciples, uh, one of the bold ones, one of the brash ones. I mean, his nature, his physical nature, his, his personality was he, was, he was one to mix it up. He was a guy who was ready to fight. He was a guy who was afraid of nothing in the natural sense to try things out. He's the one that stepped out on the water when Jesus invited him to come and walk on the water. You know, I know that he began to sink, but you got to give him credit. Nobody else did that. So Peter was by nature, obviously, a brave guy, a brash guy. But when the chips were down, when public opinion had turned on Jesus, and they were trying him, they had arrested him, they were trying him, they were uh, uh, prosecuting him, and he was on the way to the cross. The Scripture tells us that Peter denied Jesus three times in one evening. He was fearful. He was afraid. And he ran from his association with Jesus. Afterwards, he felt so guilty about it. But Jesus, in his love, after Jesus was raised from the dead, appeared to him and, and, and comforted him and calmed him and let him know that he still had a, had a call on him and his, his, his purpose had not changed for Peter. So Jesus restored him. But even at that, even after Jesus appeared to him and he knew Jesus was alive and he had received forgiveness of sin, received eternal life, even after that, the disciples still cowered, in a sense, in Jerusalem. Jesus told them when He ascended to the Father in Acts chapter 1, He said, You tarry here in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. He said, After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall be witnesses unto Me. Now He didn't say He'll give you the power to witness. What He said was, You will receive the power to be witnesses. And there is a difference. It's one thing to just witness to something or bear witness to something, but it's another thing to be a witness. What God was telling them or what the Lord is telling us, what Jesus was telling them was, there's going to come a power on you that's going to transfigure you. It's going to transform you from the fearful fallen nature of man that everybody partakes of into a dynamo, into a powerhouse for God. And he said it was the power of the Holy Spirit that was going to cause that. Now, you're there in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, again in verse 6. The first thing that we read here was, I put you in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Now that word gift is the Greek word charisma. It's where we get the word charismatic from. You know, in the, in the church world, uh, the church is categorized according to beliefs. And there's the mainline denominational church. And there's the, uh, you know, the, the, the high church and so forth. But many are referred to as charismatics. That's where, this, that's, that's where that name comes from, this word. It's the word for gifts. And specifically, gifts of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 talks about these spiritual gifts. And what it's referring to is an empowering of the Holy Ghost in the believer's life. A power that natural man doesn't have. A power that natural man doesn't have access to. So what he's explaining to us is that the church, the believer, has the ability to walk in a realm that the unbeliever does not have access to. Why? Because through the blood of Jesus we have access into this grace of God. We have free access into the presence of God. Our rights to stand before God clean 
have been restored. Our ability to stand before God as if sin had never existed has been fulfilled in Jesus. And now then, God says, that's great. You're clean. We're ha we have a relationship. I'm the father. You're the child. But now I want to empower you. This is what the power of the Holy Spirit is all about. God wants you walking in power. God has made provision for you to walk in power. And this power that I refer to is the power of the Holy Spirit. And all the gifts of the Holy Spirit have been made available to the church, to the believers, to the body of Christ. Now this, this power is transforming power. This power manifests itself in boldness. This power manifests itself in ability. This power manifests itself in fearlessness. No longer are we bound by the spirit of fear. No longer are we subject to timidity because of the spirit, because of the fear of death. We know where we're going. We know what the future holds. And therefore, we can be bold and, and, and walk in this earth as those that have been empowered of God. Now, again, these gifts of the Holy Spirit, these impartations, these manifestations of the Spirit. I want to remind you of what the Scripture says over in the book of Acts, and I'll go back to Acts chapter 2 because we look at the beginning of this empowerment. It says in verse 1, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, the Scripture says, not only did they speak in other tongues, but it demonstrates this transformative power of the Holy Ghost on the believer. Prior to this, what are they doing? They're waiting like Jesus said. They're not making any noise. They're not calling any attention to themselves. There's a handful of them, 120 or so, that are gathered together in the upper room. And they're all up there, and they're gathered together, and they're not, they're not evangelizing. They're not, they're not out on the streets of Jerusalem. They're not calling any attention to themselves. Why? Well, no doubt they're still uncertain as to what we're even supposed to do with all that we've seen and all that we've heard and, and uh, the instructions that the Lord left us before He departed. And suddenly as they were gathered there in that upper room, suddenly they heard a sound and a wind began to blow and tongues of fire. There was fire. There were flashes of light, lightnings going off in that upper room. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak. They, they filled up and they overflowed in this language of the Spirit. And what was this language? Well, there, there were many different languages because there were, there were those in the city when they poured out of that upper room, that heard them speak in their own tongues and in their own dialects. They heard them, they heard them magnify God in their own language. Now, I want you to notice the first thing about this was that when they were filled with the Spirit, when they were empowered by the Holy Ghost, the first thing that happened was the room that they were in became too small to hold them. I'll tell you what, when God fills you up with His power, whatever's got you trapped, whatever's got you caged in, becomes no match for what God has done in your life. Uh, you know, the devil may have built fences around you. The world may have put a cage around you. There, there may be all kinds of circumstances you're facing. But when the Holy Ghost comes, when you are filled with the Spirit, empowered by this divine power, then whatever's got you can't keep you. They came out of that upper room. They poured out into the streets. Let's keep reading. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost, began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together, and they were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, dwellers of Mesopotamia, 
Potamia, and so on and so forth. Others in verse 13 began to mock and said, These men are full of new wine. In other words, they said, These, these guys are just drunk. They, they're crazy. Now, verse 14, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted his voice, and he began to preach to them. Now, this was the same Peter that just weeks before had run in terror, hiding, denying Jesus, afraid to be associated with Him. Now then, Jesus is gone. He's not even here anymore. But something has come in and taken His place. The promise that Jesus made them, He said, It's better for you that I go, because when I go, the Holy Ghost will come. Another Comforter, another Helper, another Savior shall come. One of the things I love about the Passion Translation is the footnote that it gives us in John chapter 14 where Jesus said, I'll give you another comforter. It brings out, the footnote of uh, John 14 says that the word paraclete, the Hebrew word or the Aramaic word, uh, the Greek or Aramaic word paraclete is a compound word that comes from two things. Para, which means stop, and cleat, which means the curse. So the Holy Ghost is another comforter who has come to put an end to the curse in my life. Glory to God. All right. So now then, Jesus has left. He's not even on the scene anymore. But the Holy Ghost has come. Peter has been filled with the Holy Ghost. He's been empowered. To be filled is to be empowered. He's been empowered by the Holy Ghost. And now then, there's a boldness. It's transformative, child of God. This is an amazing turnaround for Peter because this is the guy that was hiding out. Just, just days before, He's timid. He's uncertain of himself, unsure. But now then that he's been filled with the Spirit, he walks out and faces the same people that tried Jesus, the same people that arrested him, the same people that spit at him and vilified him, the same people that hung him on the cross. He's facing them and telling them, you should have listened. This is that which was promised by the prophet Joel, which was prophesied. In the last days, I'll pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. My sons, my daughters, my handmaids, my, hand, my, my, uh, my servants and my handmaidens. He said, it'll come to pass that whosoever shall believe on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Man, think about that. Here's Peter, the guy that was running and hiding just weeks before. Now then, he's facing them all down. And what happens? Does, does, is Peter intimidated? No, he's emboldened. What happens to the people that killed Jesus? What happens to the people that bore witness to these things and, and, and knew Him for what He was? These guys are taken aback. They have no answer except to turn their hearts to Jesus. And on that day, 3,000 men gave their lives to the Lord. 3,000 men received Jesus as Lord and Savior. Man, I'll tell you what, that's awesome. But it would not have happened without the power of the Holy Ghost. I remember a story of a great statesman, a missionary statesman, T.L. Osborne. T.L. Osborne had gone overseas and he'd, he'd been brought up in the denomination and ordained by the denomination that he was part of that did not believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, did not believe in speaking in tongues. And he went and he came back an abject failure. He felt like he was, he was all done for. It was, you know, there, there was... It didn't work. He tried it and he failed. When he returned, he encountered this experience, this outpouring of the Spirit. He was filled with the Holy Ghost and he went back to the same mission field and people began to be saved and healed by the thousands upon thousands upon thousands. And that man, before he went home to be with the Lord, was responsible for millions and millions of people giving their heart to the Lord because he walked in the power of the Holy Spirit. There's nothing like it. There's no substitute for it. Some things you can do without. Some things you can substitute one thing for another. But there is no substitute for the power of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. And the thing about it is, when you are filled with the Spirit, when you, are, when you receive this, it takes away the timidity. It takes away, it takes away the fear of death. God has not given us the spirit of fear. That doesn't just mean don't be afraid. Instead, He has replaced it with something. What is that something? It's the Spirit of God. 
It's the spirit of boldness. It's the spirit of power. It's the spirit of love. It's the spirit of a sound mind. You, don't, you, you know, so many people are uncertain about what they believe. When you're, when you're full of the Holy Ghost, He'll help you to know what you believe. He'll cause you to be confident in what you believe. You'll have a sound mind <laughs> because it'll be the mind of Christ. Now, there is no substitute for the power of the Holy Ghost in the church, in the life of the believer. And it's not just for those that go to the foreign fields. It's not just for those that are called to the fivefold ministry, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. This is for every believer. All the disciples, all those that were gathered in the upper room on that day of the outpouring of the Spirit, that's the, that's the whole church. Well, you stop and think about it. The whole church, every human being in the body of Christ was baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. And from there, the gospel was taken to the four corners of the earth. And there was no match for it. And it's still that way today. I'll tell you, when the believer walks in the power of the Spirit, there is no, there is no defense for that. Satan has no defense. All he can do is endeavor to intimidate, endeavor to cause you to withdraw out of fear of what people think, out of you know, public opinion, but none of that matters. I said, none of that matters. That's why Paul said, writing to Timothy once again, be not ashamed of my testimony. Be not ashamed. And then he said later himself, I'm not ashamed. And he said it in the book of Romans, chapter 1, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, also to the Greek. You see, it, 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 Satan will try to make you ashamed try to make you ashamed of who you are. He'll try to make you ashamed and make you feel like, well, you don't fit in or they think you're weird or, 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 or whatever. Don't worry about all that. Don't worry about that at all. You're not weird. You're born again. You're empowered and you'll always be a threat to the kingdom of darkness. You might as well embrace that power and you might as well tap into it at every opportunity. And how do you do that? Well, once again, the church was born of the Spirit of God and it began with the infilling of the Spirit and speaking with other tongues. And that same pattern is true today. Tongues gives you access. Speaking in tongues gives you access into all the power of the Spirit. And in these days of lockdown and these days of quarantine, I hope that you have taken the opportunity to spend extra time praying in the Holy Ghost, building yourself up, taking every opportunity to pray in the Spirit, because in doing so, you energize yourself, you charge yourself. Spiritually, like a battery, you charge yourself up. So once again, we see the contrast in 2 Timothy chapter 1. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So if you are fearful, then you're probably not praying in tongues enough. If you're sad and depressed, then you're probably not praying in tongues enough, praying in the Spirit enough. If you're tired and listless, the answer, the cure for that is pray in the Holy Ghost. You see, there's a spiritual energy that transcends or trumps physical energy. You, you got to take care of your body. You need your rest. But the Bible tells us that speaking in tongues brings rest. It brings an, 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 an infusion of life and power. So take the extra time to pray in the Holy Ghost. We were born, as the church world I'm talking about, we were born into power. Don't ever become powerless. Now understand, feeling powerless is not being powerless. It doesn't matter how you feel. What's important is that you recognize, acknowledge, and embrace the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. Just say it out loud. I'm filled with the Spirit, and I'm filled with His power. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but, the, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Embrace it. Don't be ashamed of it. One, one translation of ashamed or one definition of ashamed means to dishonor. It doesn't mean like to be embarrassed about it necessarily, but it means to dishonor it. Don't dishonor the power of the Spirit. Don't dishonor the fullness of the Spirit. Don't dishonor 
the gift of the Holy Ghost, the charismatic impartation, speaking in tongues. There are other gifts of the Spirit, but that is the doorway. That is the access road into all the gifts and the power of the Holy Ghost. Well, I hope you've enjoyed it today. I've sure enjoyed bringing it to you. I've gotten pretty excited and stirred up myself. And I want to take this opportunity in the Spirit of God and in the power of God to pray for you. If you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, it's as simple as asking Him to come in and take control. Don't be fooled by religious notions or concepts. Simply receive the gift of God. Acknowledge Jesus Christ as the one who died and rose again to set you free. And then call upon Him to be Lord of your life. Simply say it like this, Lord Jesus, I believe that you bore my sin and that you were raised from the dead to give me life. And I invite you into my life right now. I believe that I receive the eternal life of God because of what you've done and the gift that you've made available to me. It's as simple as that. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to let us know that. There's a button on the online platform. You can click it that says, I received Jesus. I've received that eternal life. Let us know you have so that we can celebrate with you. And for all the rest of us, let's keep in mind, this power extends to every area of our life. 3 John verse 2 tells us, Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So I decree prosperity and healing and health over you right now in the name of Jesus. Sow a financial seed. Plant that seed in the work of God. Tithe. Watch God take the seed that you sow and multiply it back into your life. Now, I just, I just sense in the Spirit somebody's hip is being healed right now. God's moving in the area of hips and bones and joints, particularly in this, in this uh, the, the mid-region, you know, the, the abdominal area. If you've got any kind of hip problem or any kind of bone or cartilage or, or I, I don't know, I just, I just sense that, that warm touch of God in this area. And I know that He's ministering to you right now, wherever you are. Hey, if that's you, uh, let us know. Text us, message us right there and let us know. Healing is flowing into my body in the name of Jesus. I'll tell you what, it's as simple as that. They said, well, I never heard of anything like that before. God's got a lot of things you hadn't heard of before. The, the beauty of it is the power of the Holy Ghost is bigger than you'll ever be able to get your mind around. So just go ahead and receive it and let God show off in your life. Child of God, we've enjoyed being with you today. Hey, join us this Wednesday night at 7 o'clock p.m. We'll see you online once again next Sunday again at 10 a.m. And until then, I bless you. I just encourage you, have a great week. Just go ahead and make it a great week in Jesus' name. And remember, there's power in the Word of God.